But you guys got another video here for you. Microsoft says it wants to add new features to Windows 10. Now, Windows 10 development uh, completely stopped because uh, Microsoft said that they are not going to be releasing any more feature updates for Windows 10. Now, we all know that Windows 10 support ends on October 14th, 2025. That means Windows 10 would then become end of life and Microsoft would then stop supporting Windows 10 altogether unless you are using Windows 10 LTSC, which is an extended uh, support for Windows 10, which means they will still receive security updates and things like that. The other option was to offer a paid security update solution just like they did with Windows 7. And we'll cover that a little bit later on in the video. But what Microsoft are now doing, which is very peculiar, is reopening the beta channel for Windows 10 on the Windows 10 Insider program to test new features and ideas before introducing them to the general public, which is you guys. Now, why would you want to be doing that on an operating system that is becoming towards end of life in October 14th, 2025? Now, Microsoft have also confirmed that anyone can join the beta channel. You will need to have an account with Microsoft to be able to join the Windows Insider program to receive some of these new feature updates that they're looking at uh, introducing to Windows 10. Now, before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or a cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. Click on those, create an account, and use my promo code, capital B, capital R, 09, and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all of your purchases on CD Key Sales. Once you've done that, choose PayPal, and they will then send you your key so you can activate your version of Windows just like that. So let's take a look at what Microsoft said about opening the beta channel for Windows Insiders on Windows 10. So they break it all down on their website where they basically say if you're in the Insider program on Windows 10, you can try out some of the new features that they are looking to uh, roll out onto Windows 10. Now with all feature updates, there's no guarantee that they will release these two uh, Windows 10, they're just giving you opportunity to test them and obviously have a look at them. And they will then consider whether it's worth rolling it out to Windows 10. Uh, they also announced that they will not be automatically upgrading you to Windows 11 when you join uh, the Windows Insider program inside the beta channel. They've mentioned that on here as well. They've also mentioned that you will be able to switch to the Canary channel or dev channels uh, but doing so will upgrade your pc to the latest version of windows 11 uh, build for those on those channels if you switch to the canary or the dev channel you will have a small window to roll back to windows 10 uh, once you've upgraded to that channel so be very very careful if you are going to be doing that because you will only have a 10 day window to roll back if you did go into those channels they also mention here that for insiders on the Windows 10 PC that don't meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11, you will not see this option to switch to the Canary or the dev channels. And they've also mentioned that the Windows 10 end of support date of October 14th, 2025 is unchanged. Joining the beta channel on the Windows 10 PC does not change that fact. And the end date for Windows 10 or end of support date would be October 14th, 2025. And this is unchanged. So and it mentions that right there on their website. And I'll leave all this in the video description so you can read it at your own leisure. So what is the main purpose for them uh, releasing new feature updates for Windows 10 if on October 14th, 2025 is going to be end of life? There might be a glimmer of hope for Windows 10 users that they may change their mind later on down the line and extend this. We just don't know. But they have clarified here that there is going to be end of life on that date and they will probably end up offering you uh, support for that uh, at a paid price, as we've already mentioned in previous videos. You can already see that Windows 10 has a 68.36% market share uh, over Windows 11's 27.64% which is massive. But what you have to understand is a lot of businesses are on Windows 10 
And what will happen is right near the end of the deadline, some of those companies will extend their security updates and pay for it. And some of them will roll out a major update at that point. And you'll probably see a big shift in percentages. Uh, you could end up seeing a lot of people staying on the extended security updates uh, by paying. Now, Microsoft have never offered this to the general public, and they are now offering extended security updates to the general public, uh, but it is costly uh, and it's not going to be cheap. So if you want to stay on Windows 10, this is not a long term solution and you are going to end up having to shell out quite a bit of money, which will obviously be more beneficial for you to upgrade your PC to a newer PC that accepts Windows 11. You're not going to be able to avoid Windows 11 unless you jump ship to Linux. And uh, a lot of people are just not going to be able to handle Linux for whatever reasons, because they have certain things that they need to do, certain games they want to play that don't work on Linux, or certain software that they use that just doesn't work on Linux. And that is the biggest problem. So let's quickly talk about uh, your PC and some of the options that you may have available to you. If you have a Windows 10 computer and you know that it's not able to upgrade to Windows 11 because it's on their unsupported hardware list. So your options are you can continue to use Windows 10 up until October 14th, uh, 2025. After that date, you will not receive any more security updates, which will mean that that PC would then become vulnerable to, uh, you know, vulnerability because it's not being patched. And that means any security patches will not be given to you. The other option is to pay for the extended security updates program, which is quite costly and it's not cheap. And it will, uh, you know, literally cost you more money than what it would be to uh, upgrade your computer so it's just not worth it it's meant for businesses really but they are offering it to home users so the other option is if you have a computer that is uh, not supported for windows 11 and you want to extend uh, windows 10 beyond 2025 and you don't want to pay uh, for the security updates then you can try to get your hands on a key for windows 10 iot enterprise ltsc 2021 this end of life date is January the 13th, 2032. So this will extend uh, your lifeline basically to 2032. By then, that computer will be so old that it won't be worth keeping anyway. So there is that option. The downfall side is this is also meant for businesses and getting yourself a legitimate key would be quite difficult. There's a lot of dodgy pirate keys out there volume keys and it's certainly not a good move to use those keys because obviously they're pirate keys a lot of those and uh, they may be sold to you by a vendor but they are not going to be legitimate keys unless you get it from a reputable source and the downfall side is also with that is you will need to do a fresh install of windows and you will need to then activate your version of windows with that particular key now, feature updates for that version are over a longer period. They don't roll out feature updates every couple of months. They're not going to be doing that. Uh, also, there will be loads of uh, features that are removed, like Windows Store and things like that. They are not on that version. So just bear that in mind uh, when you're getting into uh, that type of uh, version of Windows. The other option is to leave Windows behind and use Linux. Now, there's plenty of different flavors of Linux to choose from. We are looking at Linux Mint, and this is probably one of the ones that a lot of people will start off with. And Linux Mint, or Linux in general, has come on leaps and bounds over the years. It plays a lot of games, but it's not perfect. So before you start getting in the comments section below saying just use Linux, it is not for everyone. People can't always do everything that they want on Linux. For instance, if you want to play certain games, then it's not going to work due to the anti-cheats and things like that. And that would be Valorant, and that will be games like Fortnite. If you must play those games, then it's not going to be for you. But also things like Adobe, uh, Photoshop, and Adobe Suite, if you need that software and you need to use it, then Linux is not going to be for you. Yes, there's loops you can jump through to try and get things working, but unfortunately, uh, it's not perfect. But if you need a computer that's just functional, that goes on the internet, that watches YouTube, that can play the odd game here and there, 
it's going to be perfectly fine. You're just going to have to learn to use Linux for what it is. And it is a new operating system, and you're just going to have to start to learn a complete new operating system if you don't have the money to buy a new computer and you want to continue to use that computer, then this is another option available to you. I've made videos about this. You can check my video playlist for that. Now, it goes without saying you should never use an operating system without receiving security updates from Microsoft because this will leave you very vulnerable. As much as what people like to think that Windows 7 is still secure, it's not. It's full of holes and it is vulnerable. Same as Windows XP. As much as people like them, they're just not secure anymore because they are not receiving any security patches or any updates from Microsoft, and that makes it as holy as Swiss cheese. So just be very, very careful if you want to continue to use an operating system beyond the end of life. That's not fear-mongering. That's just a fact. There is ways of trying to make it a little bit more secure, but at the end of the day, without security patches and using old, outdated software, you are going to be vulnerable. Unless, of course, you use the computer offline and it's not connected to the internet, then of course you would be perfectly safe. The only other option is to buy a new computer, and of course that costs a lot of money. And again, uh, people, some people don't want to use Windows 11, and I completely understand that. Some people just can't stand the fact that there's, it's going in a direction that a lot of people just don't like. So if that is the case, then you've obviously answered all your own questions there. You can just use another operating system like Linux. But anyway, with that said, I think that is going to be about it. So as much as it's good news for people to see that they are going to be getting new features from Microsoft, uh, you have to ask the question why they're doing it, because obviously they're saying that end of life is still going to happen on October 14th, 2025. So it just makes no sense to me. Uh, maybe they want to roll out some of their more telemetry style uh, features to Windows 10. Well, maybe they're just looking to cash in on some of the uh, features that they have on Windows 11 and put them onto Windows 10, because obviously with the security updates, Windows 10 will be around for a few more years after 2025. Who knows? Or maybe it's just a case that they want to be able to bring it up to snuff and give it a better, uh, obviously, a better version of Windows 10, maybe a, a 24H2 or something like that. I really don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. I'm starting to waffle. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.